Uh, good afternoon. It's a delight to, um, to be here to celebrate alternative finance. And it's also a, a, a privilege to have been invited by Glenn Hodgman and the AltFi team um, to talk specifically about peer-to-peer -peer lending, which is a cornerstone of the AltFi movement. One thing most people quite rightly want to understand about peer-to-peer -peer lending is what are the risks, uh, or what the risks are. And so I'm pleased to be addressing this subject today, especially after the comments uh, this morning by Paul Clithrow. You might be relieved I'm not intending to stand up here uh, and talk about rate setters, credit loss algorithms, or the merits of our provision fund. Although if you'd like uh, to come and approach me afterwards, I'd gladly talk to you about both of those things. Rather, I want to talk about the risks of peer-to-peer -peer lending in the context of our broader financial system. And as serious as this subject is, I do want to do this um, in a slightly more fun way. When we talk about risks, and today I'm talking about downside risks, what we're really talking about is outcomes that harm. When thinking about these risks, we quickly realize that most of the outcome, not of some black swan event, but because of some human frailty. Human frailty, which has seen us succumb to temptation time and time again, is what has led to harm. So to help paint a picture of these human frailties, which can lead to harm, I want to take you on a bit of a journey. I want to look at the risks of traditional finance and peer-to-peer -peer lending through the historical and moral lens of humankind's greatest known frailties, the seven deadly sins. So what are the seven deadly sins? They are lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, rage, envy, and pride. They represent the temptations we face, which can lead to actions that might benefit ourselves in the short term, but in time they lead to misery, harm, and inevitably downfall. But fortunately, for every sin, for every risk, there is a corresponding virtue, an attitude or behavior that can allow us to avoid harm. These are chastity, temperance, charity, diligence, love, selflessness, and humility. So I want to use this framework of the seven deadly sins to look at, firstly, some of the historical failures of traditional finance, Secondly, how peer-to-peer -peer lending represents a virtuous alternative. And thirdly, what we in the peer-to-peer -peer lending industry need to be conscious of to ensure we don't succumb to temptation and repeat the failures of the past. So let's look at the first of the deadly sins, which is lust. And by the way, I should say until this weekend, I did not know what the seven deadly sins were because I'm not a sinner, of course. Um, lust is the uncontrollable desire of the pleasures of the body. In the context of finance, lust means a short-term focus on growth, regardless of the consequences. Traditional finance is littered with examples of how this lust has manifested itself. We only have to look at subprime lending and mortgage lending in the US, where the short-term pursuit of scale over prudent lending decisions led to the global financial crisis, from which our economy is still recovering today. Or in the UK, we can be a witness to the ongoing impact of large ego-driven bank M&A deals funded in cash. Or locally, one only has to hear the names of Ulco, Babcock, or Babcock to remind us of what happens when there's a relentless focus on growth, on growth with little regard to the consequences. But against the sin of lust sits the virtue of chastity. There are fundamental features of peer-to-peer -peer lending which can help protect it from lust, allowing it to provide a chaste alternative. The first feature is expertise in credit decisioning and credit pricing. Our industry has proven to be expert at both and, is making, and to be making responsible credit decisions, which balance long-term growth and outcomes. Looking at the data, operators both globally and locally often have default rates that banks would envy. In Australia, rate setter funds less than 10% of its applicants, which shows we're focused on credit performance as much as growth. This is reinforced by our exceptional credit track record. We've funded nearly 1,700 borrowers. We've had one default. The second and, and, and equally important feature is transparency, or our industry's focus on transparency. The transparency of peer-to-peer -peer lending operators, provide their investor, which we provide to our investors, allows them to know when an operator is sinning. 
focusing on growth rather than long-term credit performance and returns. At Ratesetter, we're proud to have been the first lender to have released our loan book publicly in Australia. However, despite this chastity, temptation is often lurking in the shadows. To avoid the sin in the long term, we must maintain considered growth and not overextend ourselves. This is especially true in Australia where we don't have a fully functioning comprehensive credit reporting regime and therefore we must compete with one hand tied behind our back. The second sin is gluttony, a desire to overconsume. In the context of finance, gluttony means bloated and overextended institutions that try to capture more and more value from the customer or passing on less and less. We can cite numerous examples where traditional finance has been tempted by the rich feast on offer. In Australia, we possibly have the most excessive vertical and horizontal banking integration in the developed world. As well as bloating, this leads to serious conflicts. Many consumers in Australia are still suffering the consequences of financial advisors selling them bank-owned products, products that serve the banks well and the financial advisor well, but maybe not the consumer. And at the bigger end of town, there are countless examples of financial an analysts making recommendations that work for their advisory business, but not for their institutional clients. Against the sin of gluttony sits the virtue of temperance. Peter Peer Lending has shown an ability to stick to its gluten-free diet and exercise temperance. We do one thing and we do it well without conflict. We focus just on lending. However, as an industry, we need to continually remind ourselves to avoid temptation to overconsume and thereby compromise our virtuousness. For example, we should avoid introducing products of traditional finance such as securitizations, derivatives or leverage. Such actions will introduce new risks and throw us back to the past. Such actions will mean we're not really being disruptive, but we're continuing down a well-trodden path. Greed. Greed is a desire for material gain, ignoring the spiritual. In the context of finance, greed means the pursuit of excessive profits at the cost of the consumer or the broader economy. The current structure of our financial system in Australia, which, is heavy, heavily, which places heavy reliance on a very small number of powerful institutions, leads to a lack of competition and creates incentives that don't serve the consumer nor the economy very well. We're all aware of excessive spreads of up to 15% and the related profits, although what, what many don't understand is the friction this creates in our economy and how this forms a significant, although often hidden, barrier to economic growth. Fortunately, Peter Peer Lending has recognised that you have to give in order to get and that charity is critical to success. Our industry offers consumers value by using technology to cut out the costs of traditional finance and pass on the benefits to the consumer. Our industry allows a more fair distribution of value. It allow, allows lending and borrowing to be a fair exchange. Our industry has sensible transparent fees, no, ex, no early exit fees, no hidden fees. But greed is a powerful force and the risk is that we forego charity and return to the ways of old. We must therefore continue to offer value, even when at scale. We know this is important, as if, we, if there's one reason companies have disrupted in other industries, from Amazon and retail to Airbnb and accommodation, it's because of relentless delivery of value. The fourth sin is sloth. The avoidance of physical or spiritual work. In the context of finance, this means avoiding making the effort to improve offerings to consumers. We can cite numerous examples where tra traditional finance has become too comfortable and where this has led to a lack of focus on providing solutions that customers really want. Or lazy underwriting, as seemingly has maybe become evident in Australia, in the mortgage market. Um, or a reliance on government support from deposit protection to credit crisis bailouts. Peer-to-peer -peer lending arose out of a desire to do things differently, encompassing a belief in being diligent, not slothful. We are building businesses that are focusing on the customer, 
We are making the effort and investing the resources to underwrite effectively. We are making the effort to introduce pricing that is customer specific. And in the case of Ratesetter, we undertook the hard regulatory work to open up peer-to-peer -peer lending to retail investors in Australia. We also invest, invented a provision fund to protect investors without government support. No government bailouts here. However, our, as our industry matures and enters into the mainstream, we need to be, remain diligent. We need to ensure when pricing risk that investors achieve positive returns, not just in the good years, but on a through the cycle basis. Diligence means we need to succeed not just in the good times, but in the bad. Rage. Rage is, the, is spurning, the spurning of love for hatred or fury. In the context of finance, this means treating customers as numbers or, or employing a rigid legalistic approach to custom, customer relationships. Traditional finance has often too been tempted by this sin. It has often treated customers as the entitlement of its institutions. It has persistently denied the man on the street an honest relationship with risk. It has, on occasion, perhaps lost sight of the importance of finance in forming a fundamental lubricant to individual and corporate relationships. Against the sin of rage is the virtue of love. Peer-to-peer -peer lending has successfully been, successfully been built on the values and emotions of love. Maybe not emotions, but definitely values. We are introducing a new philosophy, which is more adult about reward and risk. We are treating customers with respect, helping them understand the risks, making sure they are well informed, and then allowing them to make their own decisions. We are giving consumers greater ability to participate, and we are empowering them to take greater control of their money. At Ratesetter, we know that embracing love is working not just for our customers, but for us. We have attracted over 2,500 retail investors who are returning our love by lending on our platform and are playing their role in democratising finance. We've had over 60 customer reviews on productreview.com.au. Over 90% so of our customers have given us a 5 out of 5 star review, making us on that website the most highly rated financial service provider in Australia. However, we must remember that it is only too easy to spurn love for rage, especially as we scale. We need to maintain laser focus on our customers. We need to maintain an adult philosophy. We must not be overconfident. We must not overextend ourselves. We need to ensure our, ex our actions don't compromise our best-in-class regulation for peer-to-peer -peer lending, which strikes the right balance between protecting investors and providing the freedom for innovation. The sixth sin is envy. In the context of finance, envy means a materialistic culture within financial institutions, often with an internal rather than external focus. There are plenty of examples in traditional finance where envy has won over selflessness, be it corrosive internal politics, a focus on bonuses, which are never substantial enough relative to your neighbour. The fixation on status is evident by grand real estate or grandiose titles. In creating a new model, peer-to-peer -peer lending has been effective in resisting envy and being more selfless. Our industry is building a strong and healthy culture, as we can see here today. Our industry is genuinely focused on the customer and making a positive difference. Speaking personally, I did work in investment banking, and I witnessed colleagues motiv motivated almost exclusively by their bonuses. Whilst now I enjoy seeing my colleagues motivated by their daily interaction with their customers and by making a difference. But we must remember it's easy for envy to creep in. We need to be careful when choosing commercial partners. We could lose the opportunity to innovate quickly and to build an alternative. We need to ensure that when traditional financial institutions increase their rhetoric, we are strong and confident in our own abilities, culture and in our virtues. The final sin, and perhaps the, the worst sin of all, is pride, an excessive belief in one's own abilities. Of all the sins, pr 
pride is perhaps the sin that traditional finance is most at risk of committing in the modern age. Most bankers believe the world needs banks and banks alone. I recall reading about the time I started on the journey of setting up Rate Setter in 2012 in Australia, reading in The Economist um, a, a quote that um, if you redesign finance, you wouldn't start with a bank. You would have banks. Banks are very important. We all have bank accounts. We all rely on banks in some way or another. But the point was they're too important in our current financial system. In the context of peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's too early to say that we understand the risks of this vice, although there are plenty of observations to make. Firstly, it's important that our industry is bold enough to build an alternative to disrupt rather than emulate. It's important we remain humble and continue to look at what's disrupting other industries and bring those innovations to finance. It's important that we bring diversity and choice to a system that is closed, that is rigid. At Ratesetter, we strongly believe in the value of a two-sided marketplace, one on which our investors and our borrowers can set their own rates. For us, making sure we don't lose sight of the benefits that this can bring, for us, sorry, for us, we make sure we don't lose the sight of the benefits that this can bring, but equally, we know we need to continue to question how we can improve and how we can innovate within this model. So in summary, as an industry, we have an opportunity to make an extremely positive contribution to Australia and in other countries over coming dec decades, most notably by providing customers with better value and by reducing the risks in our financial system. But we have to remember, financial services businesses are built on trust and on track record. We need to ensure that we acknowledge and avoid the fragilities of humankind we need to ensure that we succeed not by taking our advantage, by taking advantage of our position in finance, but by moving forward purpose, purposefully and virtuously. Thank you.